Everyone has heard of the Suez Canal, but how many have heard of Darius's Canal? What Darius did was build an east-west canal that was 130 miles long. With the Persian knowledge of hydrology, Darius's engineers used digging tools made of bronze and iron to first open the canal, then clear any blown sand and line it with stone ready for his ships to sail. It would take seven years to complete the 130 mile long waterway with a massive labor force of Egyptian stone cutters and canal builders. Parts of the canal between the Nile and the Red Sea were, were actually not waterways but just points along which the, the ships could be dragged uh, until they reached uh, another deeper portion where they could again sail their course. Darius says, I, Darius, king of kings, conqueror of Egypt, built this canal. He connected the Red Sea to the Nile River for trade, and he says, and ships were brought along my canal. By 500 BC, Persia was the largest empire the world had ever seen, even exceeding the size and wealth of Rome at its height four centuries later. Persia was invincible, and its appetite for conquest was beginning to frighten an emerging power across the Mediterranean, the city-states of Greece. Just a little geographical info. That big body of water out there is the Black Sea. This thin body of water here is the Bosphorus Strait that connects the Black Sea to the Mediterranean. So I'm standing in Asia, or Asia Minor, if you will, and that land over there is Europe. Now, in 494 B.C., Darius put down a revolt from some cities on the coast of Turkey. But this revolt had been supported by Athens, so Darius wanted to teach Athens a lesson. He was going to march on Greece and attack that city. But how is he going to do it? He's got to go across the sea. Well, he takes a bridge of boats, pontoons, if you will, and lines them up from that point to that point and marches an army, so Herodotus says, of 70,000 men across the sea to attack Greece. Amazing. Persian engineers connected one side of the Bosporus to the other by scuttling boats side by side to form the foundation. Then they built a highway across the top, linking Asia to Europe. Probably this was a system of planks, and underneath there was a system of packed earth, or perhaps dry wood, to keep basically the road stable. Now, to keep the ships from wobbling, they must have used an anchor system of a certain weight because if the anchor would have been too heavy, that would have, of course, tilted or damaged the ships. There was no breaking of the planks, not only due to the weight of the army crossing it, but due to the choppy waters of the Bosphorus. That's quite the feat of engineering before the age of computers. 